Nope, it's not a chocolate ad. It's a review for the new Cherry Tigo 7 Pro Elite. And I've been driving this medium SUV for the last week with my family of three to see how it competes against rivals like the MG HS, GWM, Havel H6, and the Hyundai Tucson. Stay watching to see what we've discovered. There are three variants for the Tigo 7 Pro, and our test vehicle is the mid-spec Elite model, which will cost you $41,990 drive away. That makes it on par with most of its rivals, with the Hyundai being the most expensive competitor. Considering its price point and its spec level, you get a lot of features in this. And you'll enjoy really good premium items too, like heated and electric front seats, a panoramic sunroof, Sony sound system with eight speakers and a power tailgate to name a few. If you're after more details, the full specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au. The Tiggo 7 Pro is an attractive car that manages to blend into the sea of medium SUVs without ruffling any design feathers. Its curbside presence should appeal to a wide audience because it's well proportioned and has some interesting focal points, like this large grill with its diamond motif. I personally get images of spider eyes when I look at it, but it does add depth and dimension to the front. The sleek rear with the full suite of LED lights just rounds out the package. The interior style looks premium with the black synthetic leather upholstery and the contrasting white piping and this curved dashboard with the 12.3 inch touchscreen multimedia system and 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster looks really high end. I also really like that you've got ambient lighting, a chunky e-shifter, overall it just is a very pleasant cabin space. There's a good sense of space up front with plenty of legroom and headroom to be had. The seats are very comfortable but do sit quite high, which not really an issue because I got used to it, but my driving position at first didn't feel quite right. The individual storage options up front are fantastic for the class, with an extra deep middle console as well as this really handy shelf underneath the center console, a good size glove box and the usual drink bottle and cup holders. The charging options are really good up front with a single USB-A and C port, 12 volt port and wireless charging pad to choose from. I like that the charging pad is extra large because it accommodates a really large case like mine. The multimedia system looks great but can be a little bit laggy at times, but the Hello Terry voice assistant is all but useless. I've tried many different types of voice commands and prompts and it either just doesn't understand the prompt, repeats it back to me incorrectly, or just says basically that it doesn't compute. I do like though that it has built-in sat nav, wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The digital instrument cluster looks good and I like that you have a few themes to choose from, but it's not as customizable as what I usually like. I do love how driver orientated this cockpit is, which is really nice. The back seat is quite hard and I don't think a longer journey will be super comfortable, but I do like how supportive the backrest is. I also have plenty of room back here for my 168 centimeter height, which is great. The panoramic sunroof also makes the cabin feel very airy. The amenities and storage are also very good back here. You get the usual drink bottle holders and cup holders, as well as map pockets, directional air vents, and a single USB A port. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats, plus three top tethers. There's plenty of room for front passengers when you install a zero to four rearward facing child seat, but two seats are going to fit best. The boot is a great size at 626 liters, but if you do need more storage space, you can bump it up to 1,672 liters if you pop the back row down. The back seat has a 60-40 split and the loading space is level, which is great. I really like that this has a full-size spare wheel in it and a power tailgate. The Elite has a 1.6-litre four-cylinder turbo petrol engine with a maximum power output of 137 kilowatts and 275 newton meters of torque. It's a front-wheel drive and features a seven-speed dual-clutch auto transmission. It's actually gutsier than I expected it to be and has adequate power to be an easy open rotor. The Tiggo 7 Pro is an easy going car to drive. It handles well in the city and feels solid even at higher speeds. 
it also just feels primed and ready to go with its use of power in the sense that when you put your foot down there's not really a delay before you start shooting forward it can lose traction though when you accelerate too aggressively from a full stop the brakes aren't particularly sensitive though and you do have to be a lot firmer with them i noticed this more obviously in stop start traffic it wasn't really an issue on the open road this has got a really good steering feel it's not too heavy or light and the maneuvering of this car feels responsive because of it I don't love how it handles in corners though because there's quite a lot of roll. The cabin is nice and quiet even with wind and road noise which is great but the suspension is on the firmer side which nice ride up until you get to a bigger bump which might elicit a couple of harder grunts. I really like medium SUVs because they're really easy to park usually. Their size is quite accommodating in a tight car space and car park. But on this one in particular, it's got a fantastic 360 degree view camera system. Really makes light work of a car space. However, I didn't really notice the front and rear parking sensors sounding out a lot this week, even though it has them. The official combined fuel cycle for this is seven liters per 100 kilometers. My real world usage came out at 8.2 liters. I did some open road driving, but mostly urban driving this week, so I'm pretty happy with that economy. Based on the official combined fuel cycle and the 51 litre fuel tank, you should see a driving range of around 728 kilometres. The Tiggo 7 Pro has a great host of safety features, and like I just mentioned, I love how clear the 360 degree view camera system is. It's always good to have on a larger vehicle like this. A feature I didn't like though was the driver attention monitor because it is ridiculously sensitive and sounds out multiple times during all of your journeys. It will alert when you readjust your sunnies, blink wrong, look at your speedo. I found it to be very distracting and you can turn it off though if it bothers you but not my favourite feature. The Tiggo 7 Pro has just been awarded a maximum 5-star ANCAP safety rating from testing done in 2023. It has 8 airbags, which includes the newer front centre airbag, which is great to see. The full safety specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. The Tiggo 7 Pro comes with a 7-year unlimited kilometre warranty, which is a longer than normal term than you usually see for the class. There's a 7-year or up to 105,000 kilometre cap price servicing program, and services average at $294 per service, which is very competitive. Servicing intervals are also reasonable at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, whichever occurs first. The Cherry Tiggo 7 Pro Elite has been a surprising car. The premium features, stylish design and practical space don't marry up with the affordable price tag, but I am all for it because you get bang for your buck here. The technology could certainly improve upon, but everything else more than makes up for it. This is a solid all-rounder and gets a 7.9 out of 10 from me. My son loves the red paintwork and how much room he had in the back seat. He gives it a 7 out of 10. But if you're after more details, check out my full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.